Come on in, welcome to my home. Today we are going to talk about legends and lattes and cursed cocktails, or co curses and cocktails, depending upon which book title you look at. I will tell you right now that if you're trying to avoid spoilers from the book, don't, don't watch this video. Read the book first, then watch the video. If you're not worried about spoilers, then go ahead, keep watching. Don't forget there will be a timestamp where I talk about curses and cocktails, or cursed cocktails. I'll, I'll explain that in this video. But re research me will tell you about why this comes about, why I, we have to do some research in it, and what I think about the two books. Or are they two books? Let's see what I think about that. Alright, so this is research me. And Research Me has to tell you about, about this book simply because there's a lot of research. Legends and Lattes is by Travis Baldry. Travis is a New York Times best-selling author and he is a full-time book narrator. So you probably have heard him in different books, which I found absolutely fascinating because he, when he came up with this, he came up with this after already being a narrator for different books. So that's really cool. Now the reason you are seeing Research Me is because this, like I said in the opening of this, this takes a lot of different twists and turns. And when we start this off, we're going to start off talking about um, Legends and Lattes. And if you see me looking above you, that's because all of my notes are up above and that's how I can look at this. Because there are a lot, a lot of notes simply because I don't want to give too much away, but let, let's start it off with. So we're going to start off with the book. And to understand this book, we have to first figure out what exactly is this kind of book. It is known as a cozy book or a cozy f fantasy. A cozy book basically means that the sex, violence, and cursing take place off screen. So it's not going to have a lot of all those things in there. And this holds true. This holds very true. In fact, the most violent scene that you have in Legends and Lattes comes at the beginning, where our main character, Viv, actually kills the queen um, monster, and she gets the stone. Now, I'm going to try to pronounce these names. <sighs> There's going to be issues. I'm, I'm telling you right now. There's going to be issues. So Viv starts off the story in the prologue by killing the Scalvrit Queen and getting the Scalvrit Stone. The stone is supposed to have magical properties which will make your dreams basically come true. And she, Viv is an adventurer. She has her team of adventurers that she goes about and they do what adventurers do, you know go for the gold and get things and go on great quest. But she's also an orc. An orc is a giant humanoid type creature. And so she's sort of over this whole life of being an adventurer. She wants to settle down and has this dream of opening up a coffee shop. So far, so good. So she goes to the town of Thune, which I'm guessing I'm saying that right. She has the witching rod, which leads her to a spot where she thinks that the magic will happen, which will help enhance the Scalvrit stone, which will then help make her dream come true of having this, you know, coffee shop. And it makes a lot of sense going into this, because in this fantasy, magic has, you know, areas where it happens more, and it's more prevalent, so she goes there. She first meets the nosy kind of neighbor who's laney, and it's okay. Then she also meets a carpenter who's Cal, and Cal is going to become, and you're going to need to remember these because this is going to play a big role in the rest of this. Viv has come to Thune, and she's now found an old livery, which the witching rod has said this will be the perfect place for you to start up your coffee shop. So what does she do? She buys it because she does have enough money to do that. She buys the livery and she knows that she's going to need to turn it into this coffee shop. And of course, she also knows that she's going to need Cal, who will help her build the coffee shop. So far, so good. And I mean, this all, it makes a lot of sense 
it goes really nicely with everything. Now, in Thune, the th town is run by the Madrigal, and she has a couple of henchmen who, every month, you have to pay dues to her. Of course, Viv is not real thrilled about this idea, but, you know, since her business isn't starting, isn't open yet, they just warn her about that. And there's lots of work that has to be done with the business. And the lots of work with the business means that everything has to be brought up to code, I guess you'd say. Now, what's interesting about this is this uses a lot of normal things that you would expect out of, I'm going to say, you're looking at like a medieval kind of time. I, so our advancements in technology are basically done by gnomes. Gnomes are the ones who create these special machines like a coffee maker. And nobody in Thune has uh, heard of a coffee maker. So, you know, coffee is going to be this new thing that she's going to have to introduce the people to. And she will, of course. It just makes sense. So she then starts building up her shop with the help of Cal. She puts out an ad for a barista, basically, and um, Tandri answers the ad. Tandri is the succubus. If you're wondering what a succubus is, and I will read this, a succubus is a demon or supernatural entity in folklore. It's usually a female, and it appears in the dreams to seduce men and um, what's interesting about that is usually it's through sexual means and then they drain them of their life form, but that does not come up in this. In fact, that does not come up in this at all. She even says that she's not going to do that. And all is good. Everything is going along to plan. Now, I'm leaving out big parts of this simply because it's a book you might want to read. So I don't want to give everything away. So they come up and they open up the shop. And the shop draws in people by having a very nice free coffee samples. Because nobody has tasted coffee in our area yet. Hmm. It's interesting. Nobody's tasted coffee in their area. You meet a lot of different characters. And a lot of different characters from the bard, who's Pendry... Uh, the bad guy who's um, Fennis, and these people play somewhat interesting roles in this simply because we know Fennis wants to get the Scalvret Stone simply because he thinks that he should have it even though when um, Viv got it, she did get it from the group and she didn't get take any of the gold that they got from the Queen Scalvret, she took the stone, and that was supposed to be called it even, so everything's even, right? Well, she befriends most people in the town, and she thinks that all of this is because of the stone. The stone is helping her run her business, the stone is helping her make friends and all those things, but she's also worried about this bad guy. And the Madrigal is also worried somewhat about this bad guy. Doesn't even like him. So that tells you he's a bad guy. They end up with a dire cat, which is a giant cat who shows up. And this is just one of those, what does it really do? It scares people because it's a big cat. But she's very, Viv is very worried about not intimidating people because of her size. And she's a an orc, so that could be very, very scary. Thimble is one of the characters who shows up in Thimble, and I'm guessing, and this is one of the things which I do not like about the book, is he's a ratkin, but they don't tell you what a ratkin really is, and from my research on this, a ratkin is like a rat humanoid type person. Uh, Viv has protected him one time, so he makes her some treats. She loves the treats, so she starts him baking in her, in her coffee shop, and so each chapter, each day, basically, they add a new coffee feature or a new um, baked feet feature, and that's how they build up the recipes and people come to go there, and everybody enjoys it, everybody's happy. So with everything coming in together, the shop doing quite well, Viv knows that Fennis is out there and he could at any moment steal the stone which she has hidden in the shop. The stone gets stolen. Viv knows that, you know, now everything's going to be a failure. 
she's got nothing to do, um, Tandri is going to leave her because Tandri and she have already formed this, like, bond, and what's going to happen? I mean, the stone was everything, but of course, as most books will tell you, the stone isn't everything. This book is more about having the magic that you possess is actually more about you, and it's more about what you do, and less about, you know, having this magic stone. And there's also arcane reprocity, which is um, basically that once you do something, it's going to come back to you. So that's something to think about, something to think about big time. So when, of course, it, the building burns down, everybody wants to come and help her out, and they do. End of story. Hooray. And you're like, well, this doesn't seem like much of a book review. Well, there is a reason. Let's talk about why this book review sort of changed. And that reason is Cursed Cocktails. Cursed Cocktails is a book which was inspired by le um, Legends and Lattes. Cursed Cocktails was originally called Curses and Cocktails. Our main character is Ron is Roran. He's a blood mage. Um, blood mages use the, like, well, I mean, it's, this is one of those things, sort of, you get it. He's a military type. And then he's seen a lot of fighting, and he's killed monsters, and now he wants to retire because he's up in the north, and he wants to go someplace warm, and his best friend suggests that he go south, and he does. In his possession, he has his father's journal, and his father did all of these things where he would taste or make, taste these drinks, and then he would write down the recipe for them, and he would include the tasting notes and all of that. This is where this book gets interesting, because they give you the recipes, and you can pretty much figure out how to make the cocktails from the recipes in the book. And this is where it gets interesting when you compare Cursed Cocktails to Legends and Lattes. Cursed Cocktails has the recipes. Legends and Lattes missed the boat on that because they could have very easily had the recipes in it, but they didn't. All right, so let's get back to our Cursed Cocktails. We are now in the land of Nelderland, uh, and we are Ron, our Roran. I would say, yeah, Roran? Yeah, Roran, uh, is in the Seaside Inn Tavern, where he meets bartender Callum. Callum then, um, gets an interest in the cocktail book. Yay! They meet, uh, Roran meets Jasper. Jasper is the cart driver, and basically, I'm thinking it's more like a rickshaw kind of thing, where he takes Roran about around cool. And, of course, Roran finds an old shop called Sugar and Spice. It's a former uh, tea-type, uh, apothecary-type thing. And every business that opens up in the place that where this was has closed because the place is supposed to be haunted. It's supposed to be cursed. Okay, cool. So far, we're doing really well. He doesn't know what he's going to do. He's out of the military now because he's done with that military life. He wants to see what the city has to offer. He runs into two kids, James and Cindy, and James and Cindy are the sweet, adorable children who seem like James is supposed to be really young, like eight or so, and they've been stealing from a merchant, and of course, Roran being the good person that he is, he pays up their debts to the merchant. The merchant is great. James and Cindy's father is Thomas, who's a sailor, and he's out at sea for long periods of time, and that's why they end up stealing, because if he's out on the, out the sea for too long, they don't have enough food that he um, left them. Okay, we're doing pretty well so far. Roran realizes that he's lacked purpose. With his father's book in hand, he realizes that he can then open up a tavern. And, of course, Callum is right there with him so that they can open up the tavern together. Are you seeing similarities? Because it's going to get bigger. Um, Roran also has a problem where he is he's hearing sounds in the bottom part, which is going to become the tavern. 
he's hearing sounds that could possibly be the monsters or, you know, ghost or whatever that's in there. He thinks that they're rodents, so they suggest that he gets a cat, so he gets a cat. He has Jasper get him a cat named Jinx. From here, Roran is, like, really setting up to get his tavern put together. Getting the glasses, everything together, Calvin's going to be his bartender. And what's interesting about this is, instead of, in the first book, it was Viv who taught Tandry how to make the drinks. In this book, it's Callum who teaches Roran how to make the drinks. Uh, Roran is still hearing these weird sounds, and Jinx is now there. He follows Jinx down to a secret, a secret passage, and the secret passages leads to Roran finding a spirit fox. A spirit fox, I'm going to read this to be exact, a spirit fox is a creature that's said to watch over the dead and keep evil spirits away. He finds that in tunnels that go throughout the city. That part of the story is not really ever explored. I'm sure it'll come up in another book if there is another book. Um, so they open up the bar. Everything's good. There's a storm festival coming up, and the storm festival is going to be a big chance for them to really show off their tavern, and as expected. That is when a kraken comes in. The kraken, of course, is a giant monster which is going to terrorize our parts of our town, and the part of the town it's going to terrorize is the part of the town where Cindy and James are. James is now working for Roran as a barback. Let his age go. Just just let that go. So he's working as the barback of the town. Um, Roran decides he's going to go and save Cindy and James from the Kraken, and to do that, he of course has to use his blood mage power, which he's been trying to hide this entire time. This book, when it comes down to it, is all about being who you are. This book is not about the magic being in the stone and believing that the stone is what's giving you the power. This book is just about people accepting you for who you are. So when he defeats the Kraken and the town is happy, but of course he is drained of all everything and he's out for three days, but people still take care of him. Everybody accepts him. Life is good. What are my issues? Okay, here are my big issues with this. If you were following that, and why I kept this sort of why I kept the description sort of sort short, is so that we can talk about that. It follows the books follow each other almost beat to beat. Now, Legends and Lattes was written before Cursed Cocktails, and the author has said Cursed Cocktails is inspired by Legends and Lattes. But looking at the two characters, you have a female orc named Viv, you have a male mage slash elf, they call him an elf, quite a few, uh, named Roran. Roar, Roran. Cool. They meet up with the people who will become their significant others. Uh, one is hired, that would be um, Tandry. The other is a bartender at another tavern, that would be, what is his Callum? Okay, no problem. They meet a helper character, Viv meets Cal, and Roran meets uh, Jasper. Right. Then instead of having a person who, you know, will help them in the business, Thimble is that person in Legends and Lattes. In this one, it is James and Cindy, basically James, who they're both childlike and are very helpful. Cool. They both get cats at some point. The cat, the dire cat in Legends and Lattes really is just there to scare people, um, whereas the cat in Cat Jinx actually finds the spirit fox in Cursed Cocktails. Where the, where the interesting thing about this is, and what I wish that Legends and Lattes had done, I truly, honestly wish that Legends and Lattes had included recipes and all of those things in there. Because there's lots of chances for them to have as they made the new cocktail, as they made the new coffee drinks, as they made the new um, pastries and baked goods, very easily that could all have been included in the book. 
whereas Cursed Cocktails, they include that. In fact, you can join on to the uh, mailing list and get a copy of the cocktail ideas that you can get there. And that I really liked. I mean, like, the two books, would I say that one is better than the other? Ooh, that's a tough. I don't know. I can't say that one book is better than the other one, simply because they are different enough that it isn't just flat out copying it, because Cursed Cocktails is way more violent than Legends and Lattes. I don't think you can find Cursed Cocktails as a nice, cozy kind of book, but it's an interesting read. Uh, it does take it from, and I, what I think is really interesting is, with Legends and Lattes, it's more of a female-geared book, which, I mean, they have, it's coffee and lattes, whereas Cursed Cocktails is more of a male-geared book, and it's cocktails. Kind of sexist, but okay, I can deal with that. I did enjoy both books, and if I were giving a rating system, I would give um, Legends and Lattes four and a half stars, because I really did enjoy it. I thought it was a good book, I thought it was really fun, and all of those sort of things, and then I would give Cursed Cocktails four stars. Why am I taking away the half stars if the books are basically even? Simply because it copies too much of Legends and Lattes. And I mean copies way too much of Legends and Lattes. Is it an exact match? No. But it's match enough that I found it mildly disturbing. Mildly disturbing. Uh, there is going to be another, there's going to be a part two coming out on November 7th to Legends and Lattes. It's Bookshops and Bone Dust. This should be interesting. I am say I am looking forward to that. I think it's I think it's really is worth the read. As of right now, I'm double checking. As of right now, there does not seem to be any indication that there will be another part to Cursed Cocktails. I kind of hope that S.L. Roland does decide to do a part two to this, because like I said, it is a good book. Don't get me wrong, it is a very good book. It was entertaining, but it did. It followed, it followed Legends and Lattes, and I so, so hope that S.L. Roland is not waiting for um, the second and the Legends and Lattes books to come out so he can follow that. I don't think he is, because it is different enough that it didn't match 100%. Alright, so that is my idea of the two books. Curses and Cocktails, Legends and Lattes. The new Legends and Lattes does come out fairly soon. And yes, I will be reading that. And yes, I'll probably do a book review on that. But let me know what you thought about it if you've read it. Let me know if you're going to read it because it really is a really good book. Like, I did enjoy it a lot. I do like the cozy mystery, the cozy fantasy, the cozy genre, simply because it is something nice, light, and fluffy that you can read, but it does have some really deep, more meaning into it. I really would suggest both books for you to read, for you to enjoy. Let me know what you thought about this. I'd like to take this time to thank these wonderful people who let me read books for a living. If you want to become part of them and get the videos early, you can become part of the channel members or you could jump onto Patreon and become a patron. You will get these videos and you will also get, you'll get these videos early and you'll also get a weekly vlog, which you've probably already seen the fifth Wednesday vlog, which every time there is a fifth Wednesday, you'll get to see the behind the scenes of what I do. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope we get to see you again the next time you stop by.